Hello and welcome to another episode. In this video, we're going to talk about something a little bit different. And it's about what's more important, shot placement or the power level of your air rifle. So this next clip, you can see two feral pigeons. You can see they both slightly presented differently. Your feral on your left that's slightly quartering away from you. And your feral on your right that's presenting a full frontal shot. This clip is like the bird on the left. You can see I target the heart and lungs. In this clip, much similar to the bird on the right hand side, and with a heart shot or a crop shot, centre mass, as you can see, they're both very effective. Here's a quick diagram, just shows you the anatomy of the pigeon. And I've highlighted with a red circle. If the birds present sideways, where you need to aim for an heart and lung shot. In this clip, you see two red dots, one on the art for the front front of the shot that you've seen, and the crop shot. Both these are effective shots. And if you miss the vital area, you're going to need another vital organ. Now, a favourite shot, and one that shouldn't be dismissed, is from the rear straight between the shoulder blades or the wing blades and again it'll travel straight through hit the heart the liver the lungs and the crop this is a devastating shot there isn't as much bone uh, breast meat on the rear of a bird and the pellet will have an easier path through an effective shot and one we should all be aware of is the head shot and you can see with this little red dot that I've highlighted where the brain is. Either hit the brain or you'll sever the spinal cord effectively killing the bird or the quarry outright. This is a good example of an head shot. This wood is quite close so I allow just a little bit I hold under. I wait for it to present itself Crosshairs are targeted on head. The pellet will rise slightly. Now this is very typical of an head shot. You know when you're on the money. You know when you've got it right. What you'll notice is the bird or the quality of bird species that you're targeting will roll around. You can see that the neck has lost all function functionality because you've severed the spinal cord as well as it's in the brain area and the tail feathers will always fan out tail feathers are connected to the spine and that's surefire way of telling that you've hit the brain and severed the spinal cord The idea for this video came about after talking to a subscriber, Luke Wood. I was talking to him in the comments section of one of my latest videos. And he mentioned why, when I shoot, do I manage to dispatch most of my quarry humanely and quickly. I was trying to explain to him that it's not about power levels. All sub 12 foot pound modern PCPA rifles, whether that's 0.177 calibre, 0.22 calibre or 0.25 calibre retain roughly the same energy down range. So it's not about calibre size, it's not about power levels, it's all about knowing your bird's anatomy or your quarry's anatomy and putting a shot in the right place. This is an example of a magpie. That shot, you can see I'm just on edge of the, the wing area. I know the heart and lungs, just just where that area is. And I'm just waiting for the bird to steady. And I release my shot. And you can see from the reaction of that bird, it's dead before it's hit the ground. This is an example of where I were aiming. So I'm following the wing up. And it's just slightly behind the breastbone. Again, head shots. Eat a bird in the brain, sever the spinal cord, and it's lights out again.
it's another example of an out and long shot. This crow is quartering away from me. I'm following the wing line up again. Imagining where the breastbone is. I'm tucking it in just behind the breastbone and just in front of the wing line. Again, another effective shot. So this brings me on to the larger quarry that you can shoot with an air rifle. Rabbits, hares. You can see where the brain's located with the red dot, just behind the eye and the ear. But you can also see that an art and lung shot wouldn't be effective because of the bone mass, muscles, fat and fur that's covering the heart and lung area. You want to be aiming between the eye and the ear, slightly towards the top of the rabbit's head because that's where the brain will sit in the cavity. And I would suggest that you only take headshots on rabbits or your larger mammals that we target. An effective brain shot like that one will drop it in its tracks. It's nice and humane. You can see how its body folded up. It will lights out before its chin touched the floor. This is another example of an headshot. It's slightly further at distance. I'm allowing for a bit of wind, but I'm aiming for exactly the same area between the iron ear towards the top of the head. And again, another clean, effective kill. This rabbit's a little bit closer, so I'm allowing a little bit of hold under. But you can see, I hit the sweet spot. And I'll reiterate it again between the iron ear, slightly towards the top of the head. There's very little movement, very little reaction from this rabbit. And that's what gives you satisfaction as an hunter. So forget about power, forget about calibre size. Concentrate on finding a pellet and a combination of rifle and scope that are accurate. Your own skill level comes into it, so practice, 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 and learn to put the pellet where you want it to land. At this point, you should notice a pattern to what I'm talking about. I keep illustrating it with red dots. Eye, ear, towards the top of the head. Here's a couple of examples of the Norwegian brown rat, or more commonly known as the brown rat in the UK. No matter what you quarry, everything deserves a humane, clean kill. I have a lot of people saying, take them out with heart and lung shots. And yes, that is feasible with rats because they're small rodents. But if you want it to be a quick, clean dispatch and recover your quarry at end of any session, then always aim for headshots. If it takes you a little bit more time, then that's all well and good. You shouldn't be rushing your shots. And you should be achieving clean, humane kills. Although we're still watching rat shooting, and you're going to see examples of headshots, this is a perfect opportunity just to talk about how do you learn anatomy of the quarry that we shoot. Other than rats, I would advise rabbits, squirrels, wood pigeons, or anything that you're going to eat, prepare it for the table, pluck it, Punch it, clean it, and by doing this over and over again, you're going to learn the anatomy of what we target. You'll find out where the vital organs are, the heart, the lung, the muscle mass. Understand how the skeletal forms of these animals are made up, and where there's a lot of bone, and where you can't target, or where you won't be able to place a pellet through to the vital organs. Here's an air gunner's, one of an air gunner's favourite quarries, the grey squirrel. I've mentioned before, it's an invasive species in the UK. There's no seasons. They can be targeted all year round. And they're a challenge for an air gunner because they're jittery and very twitchy when either in the trees, on the woodland floor, or coming to a feeder that's designed to target them in a woodland. Again, if you eat the grey squirrel, You'll have dissected them. Maybe you've even took a look at the brain and the skull areas. Although they regard as a tough critter, they are tough because really you only want to be taking them out with headshots. And again, look at where we're aiming. Behind the eye socket, in front of the ear, towards the top of the head. With a sub 12 foot pound air rifle, you've got a choice of side on shots or full frontal. 
You'll see from full frontal shot, I'm slightly above the eyes towards the top of the head. This particular shot, you'll take out the brain and it'll travel down, severing the spinal cord and possibly hitting a few vital organs as it travels through the body. Here's a good example. You have to be patient and wait for this squirrel to present a shot. It comes from behind and side at feeder. But when they're quartering away like that, it's perfect. This one's quartering away, caught it out on a tree. As you can see, I let my shot go. Between the eye and ear. And that were a nice clean dispatch. Because of the body fat and bone structure of squirrels, I'd only advise headshots. Look where my crosshairs are coming up. They're coming up slowly. Looking like I'm aiming towards the eye. Then I move slightly up, slightly to the left. When it's in the right place, I release my shot. Now it's not all about placement as well. You know, you've got to learn your skill set. Breathing, trigger control, timing. Practice with your set up regular. And you'll develop muscle memory. And you'll be able to put that pellet where you want it to be. Here's an example of full frontal shot. So I'm just between both eyes now, centre mass, raise it up slightly, release the pellet. Look how that squirrel folded up. That would have been a lung shot for an example. That squirrel had run off. It might have run 15, 20 yards into undergrowth. They're well camouflaged even though they're grey in colour. And you've never seen it again. This is an example of a different type of shot. So I'm aiming at the base of the ear. This is going to sever the spinal cord. And look at that. Nice clean kill yet again. And we're coming up to the last shot now. Side on, between eye and ear, and watch the reaction of this squirrel. Grips onto the tree. Neurons are firing off its brain. Muscles are starting to relax. This squirrel is effectively dead as it grips the tree. When the brain realises and the art realises. This game over. This squirrel will drop to a woodland floor. I hope you found this video useful and informative. I've tried to give you some examples of different types of shots. As you become experienced as an hunter, there's not a lot to think about, it becomes instinctive. I've mentioned before I've been shooting over 30 years and automatically when any type of quarry presents itself I know where to put my crosshairs instinctively. You can develop these skills through experience and by regular practice. You can practice without firing a shot. Just hold your rifle, scope on a target, bottom of your garden. Rifle don't have to be loaded. And you can just practice until that muscle memory is there. Thanks for watching.